Morning, everybody. Big Stu here, and I wanted to talk to you some more about Newton's laws of motion, specifically Newton's first law. The other day, I told you a little bit about Sir Isaac Newton's history and about how the apple inspired him to come up with his three laws of motion. Well, today, we're going to talk about the first one, which is often called the law of inertia. Now, inertia is a weird word. It doesn't sound like anything. You may have heard this word before because it's part of the Bill Nye song, where he's talking about Bill, 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 and he says, inertia is a property of matter. Well, I've had a lot of students put that on papers to tell me what inertia is, but that doesn't really describe it. Here's what it is. If an object is sitting still and it's not moving, if it has potential energy, yes, I'm bringing back some old vocab here. If its forces are balanced and it's not moving, that object wants to stay still and not move until a force makes it move. I'll give you an example. Right now I have three cats, Elwood, Maggie, and Ollie. Now Ollie's the big cat. He's, he's about 27 pounds. And when he lays down on top of a table or a desk, he seems to have an issue with everything that's on that table or desk. And he'll take his foot and kick stuff off the desk. Well, the things on the desk were not moving until Ollie's foot applied a force to kick those things off the desk. Okay? Inertia also deals with things that are moving at a steady pace. All right? Their forces are balanced and they're moving along but some force makes the motion change. Either it makes you turn, or it makes you slow down, or it makes you come to a stop. I want to take you back in time a little bit to when I was a kid, back in the 70s. All right? In 1977, I was six years old. We had a car that <laughs> we would call a land yacht these days. Back in those days, the cars were long, they were super heavy, and the seat belts that they had, most of the seat belts were only the ones that went across your hips in your lap. They didn't have the one that was the shoulder belt that comes across like that. And so if you were a passenger in a car or if you were the driver and you had to come to a sudden stop because a ball rolled into the road, a child ran into the road, an animal ran into the road, Godzilla walked across the street, whatever. If you had to slam on brakes, your body would pitch forward and then come back because a force made your body change its motion. Your, your body was in the car. It's not part of the car. When you bought the car, <laughs> you didn't come with it. You were not, you know, an added feature. But when you were riding in the car, your body's motion was the same as the car. And so when the car had to stop, your body wanted to continue moving forward. Now, my mother would do two motions in the car. And this ties in with inertia. If she had to suddenly hit the brakes, she would automatically do that mama arm where she throws her arm out to try and stop you like she's a human seatbelt. I discovered that she would even do that when nobody was sitting in the front seat. And I suddenly realized that not only was I grown, but I was getting older when I realized that I do that too, even if nobody's in the front seat. The other thing she would do is if my sister and I were acting up in the back seat, which was pretty much a constant thing because she tried to take all the room in the back seat and I couldn't do anything about it because I was bigger and older and I couldn't hit her in the head. My mother would take her arm and reach back and start swatting. And my sister and I would press ourselves up against the window glass like jellyfish to keep from getting swatted. Anyway, back to inertia. I wanted to use an example today that I thought might make sense to you. And when I was flipping channels, I saw that the movie Tarzan was on. So I thought, oh, okay. I will use Tarzan as my example. So I've made you a poster. <laughs> you know I like to make posters. All right, so in the first instance, all right, remember objects at rest stay at rest and objects in motion stay in motion until a force acts on it to make a change. 
All right, so in this first situation, you've got Tarzan. And Tarzan is getting ready to swing on the vine. Well, when Tarzan is standing there on the branch, he has no motion. He's what we call at rest. Now, at rest doesn't mean exactly asleep. We often use the word rest to mean that you're taking a nap or you're asleep. In this case, at rest just means you're not moving. You're standing still. So Tarzan has the vine, and his motion will remain zero until he leaps off the vine. When he does, gravity is the force that takes over, and that's what will make him swing as he's ah, swinging through the jungle. All right? That's the force that makes his body movement change. Now, if Tarzan does not judge the direction of his vine movement correctly, he might slam into a tree. All right? Now, Tarzan stays in motion. He's swinging on the line until he hits the tree. All right, because he encountered a force that made him stop his motion. This is inertia. All right, he was moving and then he came to a stop. Things in motion want to stay moving until something made him stop. In an ideal situation, if Tarzan had plenty of vine that wouldn't run out, and there were no trees for him to run into, or gravity didn't pull him off the vine, or he didn't run into any monkeys or bananas or whatever else would be in the jungle that he could run into, or Jane. Tarzan would have the ability to swing on that vine forever. Now, I realize that's not realistic because, you know, there's no vine that would be able to encircle the earth that way. But this is inertia, all right? If a force doesn't make the change, it's going to stay exactly the same. Either it's going to stay moving or it's going to stay still. It'll be at rest. All right. We're going to talk a little bit more about Newton and inertia this week. I call it Sir Isaac Newton Apple Man because you think about these laws and how you like them apples. So tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit more about inertia, but in the meantime, Have a good day.